encourage all attendees to ask questions. Please use the chat box and send your questions to all panelists. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Today's webinar is entitled Understanding the Five Seeds of Credit from a Lender's Perspective. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Ms. Vega for us to begin. Hi, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity for joining for today's workshop. Um, as Stella mentioned, my name is Annette Vega, and I work for CIBC Bank. I'm Managing Director in the Community Development Group. Um, I love uh, to work with small business owners and just give them different perspectives as to what a lender um, expects when a business loan is being extended. So today uh, we're going to um, go over PowerPoint, um, CIBC small business financing products, along with um, the five C's of credit would be included in this presentation. And as Stella mentioned, um, you can use the chat for any questions that you may have. Um, we are here to help. So one thing that I would say is um, that, you know, the lender always wants to know how much money do you need for your business. Um, that's key, a key component when you come to the bank um, that you kind of have that in order um, so that we know exactly what you need the funds for. So what do you need financing for? It could be supplies, inventory. Um, a lot of times you wanna um, purchase inventory while waiting to get paid. Uh, you wanna pay payroll and rent, um, purchase equipment and fixtures, uh, purchase uh, a computer, you know, updating your technology um, or even buying the business. Prioritize, prioritize those areas where your options are limited to paying in cash and review your alternatives where there may be another way. For example, it is not necessary to pay cash for a delivery truck when you can rent or lease one. So where to get the money? So entrepreneurs have a wide variety of options when it comes to funding. Below the list of possible options for a small business to research and consider regarding lender types. Lending options for small businesses. You can go to a bank, credit union, uh, you could obtain an SBA loan, um, there's also microfinance op options such as the WBDC, um, Acción, uh, now um, known um, as Allies for Community, uh, Chicago Neighborhood Initiatives, um, crowdfunding, uh, Kiva, Kickstarter. So there's a lot of ways that you can access lending options. Asset-based lending, um, factoring, there's factoring companies, online business lending. Um, so there's a lot of different um, lending options. Um, the online business lending options are a great source, but it's very um, crucial that you um, pay attention to the fine line, um, such as what interest rate, you know, these lenders will be charging if it's daily interest, um, how it's calculated is key. Um, as to how um, they will be, you know, charging you for that loan. So what matters to lenders? What are we looking for when, um, when it's, you know, a business owner or someone that's looking to establish a business? What are we looking for in respect to that? Um, and this is, the individual, because although you have a business loan and the loan may be in the business name, we want to make sure we understand also the person that will be signing on that loan. So all of the loans that we have and most lenders have, um, you have to personally guarantee that loan. So we want to make sure that we understand the five C's of credit, capacity, credit character, collateral, capitalization, and conditions. I will go over each one of these um, in the next uh, few screens, just to kind of, you know, you get an understanding as to what we're looking for. So capacity, ability to repay the loan. 
So in other words, based on what you are presenting to the bank, such as your credit report, um, your debts, um, your assets, your liabilities, all that, we want to make sure that you have the ability to repay the loan. What are your monthly fixed expenses? The mortgage, the rent, a car note, student loans, credit card debt, and how do you intend to pay the loan back? Be it based on your business income, your personal income, or both. Other expected loan payments also um, are taken into account. So I'm gonna go back to how do you intend to pay the loan back? So when a bank is underwriting a loan, we look at both your business and your personal. So although your business can be viable and it can be very profitable, if on your personal side, you have a lot of personal expenses, um, that can impact how we will finance that loan. We wanna make sure that we're, you're not overextending yourself. So we wanna make sure that you are in a good place before we extend a loan to the business. So capacity, calculating your global cash flow. All income from business and personal minus all personal expenses and debt. I'm gonna go over that again. All income from the business and personal. So we take both the income from the business and the personal and we subtract your personal expenses and debt. So remaining amount should cover the monthly loan payment. So we cannot have a break even, meaning if you have $1,000 in business and personal minus your personal expenses and debt, total 1,000, you're at a break even, meaning there's no additional cash flow to cover the monthly loan payment. So there has to be sufficient income so that we could um, cover that monthly loan payment. So another thing that the bank looks at is credit and character. So there are three credit bureaus. The three credit bureaus are TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. These three credit um, bureaus basically are your report card, and that's what the bank kind of looks, looks at. One of the things the bank looks at to see how you are paying back your creditors, what your credit score looks like. So for small business loans, many lenders will still look at your personal credit report because uh, these loans are all personally guaranteed. Uh, so your FICO score um, will range from 300 to 850, um, 300 being the lowest and 850 being the highest. Items such as bankruptcy, tax liens, judgments, child support and arrears, can be automatic denials for many lenders. So if these items appear on your credit report, they can negatively impact the decision when it comes to um, getting a business loan. Um, for the bank, CIBC Bank, for the Entrepreneur Training Program, we are minimum credit score is 600, but we also would look at bankruptcy tax lien judgment. So if you have an active bankruptcy, we would not be able to do the deal. If you have any tax lien or judgment, that would also affect um, the decision for, for us to do a loan. So it's important that you pull your credit report at least once a year. It's something that is um, that you can get for free. Um, a lot of credit card companies, if you um, have a credit card, you can get your credit report through them as well. Um, and it's also very important because a lot of times there's items on your credit that you may have forgotten about and that they may negatively impact your score. So it's very important that you look at all three um, credit bureaus at least once a year, just to make sure that 
your um, credit score is in line and you're ready once you uh, want to apply for a loan with, uh, with the bank. So not just for credit, important, not just for credit, you can use your credit for apartment renting, jobs, insurance. A lot of these um, landlords now um, also run your credit to make sure that you are credit worthy. Um, so it's important to not only take it into account for a loan, but just on the personal side as well. You may be um, applying for a new job and they'll also run your credit. Um, and insurance, um, that may also be a key component for them to um, offer you a lower premium. So it's just important to take care of your credit. So some major factors contributing to credit score. So if you have, say for instance, you apply for a Macy's credit card over the holiday, and you know they tell you 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 know you're going to get 10% off your purchase or whatever the case may be, and at the moment it sounds lucrative because you're going to get you know percentage off. But then say January comes and you um, get that credit card statement and you forget to pay that. And now you have a 30 day past due payment. That past due payment can negatively impact your credit score. So a past payment history can impact your credit score as much as 35%. And in my experience, um, I've seen a 30 day past due credit one day 30-day pass-through credit that can impact someone's credit by as much as 100 points. So that's something that, you know, is important to keep in mind when you are, you know, um, applying for credit cards or, you know, you have a credit card that, you know, you keep, you stay on top of it. Um, maybe setting it up on auto pay where at least it takes the minimum if you want to pay more you have control over that, but if you have it set up on auto pay where it's going to pay that credit card payment, that minimum payment every month, it's, it, it'll, it'll help deter the past payment history. Also, credit usage ratio is about 30%. What, is, what does that mean? Credit usage ratio, 30%. So let's just put an example. You have a credit card and it's a $900 limit. So if you utilize $300 of that 900, you're within the credit usage ratio of 30%. And your credit score should not be impacted by utilizing 30% of that credit usage ratio. However, if you utilize 100%, meaning $900, which is what they extended that may impact your credit score negatively because you are utilizing the full amount. So it's important to also utilize your credit, um, your credit limits, um, you know, kind of pay attention to what you are paying. Credit length, um, this affects at about 15%. Inquiries, 10%. You would think inquiries would impact it more so, but it, it doesn't impact it as much as a past payment history, a, a, a past payment loan payment. Um, and different types is another 10%. So um, in a nutshell, it's important to pay attention to your, um, you know, your, how you're repaying your student loans, your um, credit cards, car payments, mortgage payments, and just utilizing um, the credit extended to you so that it doesn't impact your credit score. Collateral. So collateral is the business and or personal assets pledged to secure, to help secure the loan. So in a business loan, Typically, the bank takes your business and or personal assets to secure that loan. So if you, for instance, have a bakery, the bank would take as collateral the ovens, 
um, you know, anything that is in that business, the bank would utilize that as collateral. And what the bank does is the bank lodges a UCC lien, which is made of record um, against the business. So common types of collateral are equity in your home. So if you have a home and the value of your home is say, just put it in, just for an example, the value of your home is 200,000 and you owe 100,000, you have $100,000 in equity in your home. So the bank may take your home as collateral because it does have equity in it. Accounts receivables. So if you have a business and you have accounts receivables, the bank can take also the accounts receivables as collateral. Inventory of the business and also equipment. So all of these items are things that the bank can take as collateral in lieu of a loan for your business. Lenders go through an evaluation of the collateral to determine how much they can lend. So typically, like um, I had previously stated, if you have equity in your home, the bank will do an appraisal on that home to make sure that the value is indeed what is stated so that the bank feels comfortable taking that property as collateral so they could extend that loan. The next slide is capitalization. Capitalization is the amount of money the owner personally invests into the company. Sometimes known as the, you know, the, the bank wants to make sure that the client has some skin in the game. So we want to make sure that, you know, that you are putting something into it and the bank is not giving you 100%. So lenders are usually more willing to lend to someone who has invested some of their own money into the business. No precise measure or amount of enough capital, rather it is specific to each deal. So, you know, each scenario will be different depending on your business type and what the funds are needed for. Internal factors. So inside the business, uh, loan proceeds, working capital versus equipment versus inventory versus renovations. So the bank will look at what it is the, what you what the condition of the business is and what the loan proceeds will be used for. Will they be used for working capital? Um, will they be used to purchase equipment, inventory, or renovations? So the bank wants to know what the funds are going to be utilized for, and they will see if you know these factors, internal factors, are legitimate so that the bank can extend that business loan. External factors outside of the business, the bank also looks at. So it could be economic, environmental, legislative, and industrial. Will a certain law affect the business's industry? Is the industry growing or diminishing? And what's the competitive landscape of your industry? So economic, environmental, legislative, and industrial, I believe have a big impact on um, how the bank looks at the business. Um, especially in the past, um, I think we all can agree, in the past 12 to 18 months, um, there has been a huge shift in how external factors affect the business. Um, with um, the pandemic, there have been a lot of external factors that have affected businesses, you know, be it uh, restaurants. So restaurants needed to revamp. Um, they um, needed to find a way to continue to stay in business by maybe doing Uber Eats or um, just doing different ways to 
still keep the customer base and and stay afloat. So that's something that the bank takes into account when we are looking at external factors um, to see how we could help the business. Another thing that um, can affect the business is, um, you know, a lot of businesses got idle loans, EIDL loans um, through the SBA. Um, and those loans um, put a lien on the business. Um, so the bank has to look at those factors when uh, and a business is coming to apply for a loan. Um, another question that is on here, is the industry growing? Is the industry growing or diminishing? So, um, you know, we have to look at how that industry um, was affected. Um, so one industry that we see was heavily affected um, was the catering slash um, banquet halls um, were heavily affected um, because of the pandemic. Um, gatherings and all that has, you know, affected the business growth and for businesses to stay afloat. Um, and what's the competitive landscape of your industry? So we look at all that and that's very important for you to also look at to, to, to kind of reevaluate what you're doing, how you're doing it, and how it, the economy um, and the external factors affect your business. So how to get started? Securing a loan begins by knowing what your lender requires. So if you um, have a banker, so say you don't need a loan now, but maybe in the future you will. You want to have a banker on your side. So for a business loan, a lender typically requires the following. So we require business financial statements, business tax returns, business plan with budget or projections, personal financial statements, and personal tax returns. Why do we require all this information? Um, so we want to make sure that when you provide business financial statements that one, there's revenues. Two, we want to understand, you know, the profitability of the business. Um, the business tax uh, business tax returns for prior years will help us understand the growth of the business. So we eva we evaluate typically on a traditional loan. We evaluate two to three year of tax two to three years of tax returns. Those tax returns basically give us an um, outlook as to how the business is growing, how the business is um, profitable, and helps us understand if that is the trajectory that the bank that the business is heading. A business plan uh, for a new, say, a new business or even an existing business with a budget or a projection will help us understand, you know, what the business owner proceeds, um, especially when it's a when it's a startup. We want to see what the business owner is projecting um, for this new business. And your personal financial statement. Well, the personal financial statement will show us kind of a picture as to what your assets are, what your liabilities are, um, you know, if you have any, um, you know, how much debt you basically have and what assets you have. Personal tax returns um, also help in determining, you know, if our debt will be repaid. Um, so be ready to answer questions about your business. Um, you know, the, the bank is interested in learning about you and your business. The bank wants to know, you know, what your um, projections are, how you see yourself in five years, and we wanna see that business growth. So be prepared to tell the lenders why you need the money. I know we started the presentation that way, but that is very key um, to, to know what the money is gonna be needed for. So um, being as precise as possible is, um, is key. Um, you know, we wanna know, um, are you purchasing equipment? Are you 
building a website? Are you, um, you know, hiring, um, you know, more staff? Um, is, is the business growing to the point where you may need a line of credit? That line of credit may not be utilized um, immediately, but it's kind of something that the business needs to kind of have in the event that um, capital is needed. So it's very important to um, be as precise as possible um, and let your lender know what the money is going to be needed for. So I'm going to go through a few slides here about our entrepreneurial loan program. And this program um, was um, put together um, to help entrepreneurs, um, you know, emerging businesses and startup businesses. Um, this was um, something that was put together, I want to say six or seven years ago, and we work with um, different organizations throughout um, Chicago, St. Louis, Detroit, and Milwaukee. And um, there's uh, programs to give startup and early stage small businesses um, important skills, resources, and products to help them succeed. Um, so. Eligible graduates of these programs are encouraged to apply for financing from CIBC. Um, so with the city of Chicago, um, if you are um, signed up for this program, this is something that may work for your business. So entrepreneur loan program was created to support startup and startup or early stage small businesses with important working capital. We have lines of credit and term loans. Lines of credit, the money kind of sits there until you're ready to utilize it. And once you are able to, or you, you need the funds, that's when you will start paying interest on the amount that you request. Um, it's similar to, you know, a, a credit card in the aspect that it can kind of just sit there and wait till you need it. Um, the difference is you don't get a checkbook. Um, it's something that the bank will transfer into an account that is opened at CIBC um, for you to utilize when you need it. Term loans are um, loans that basically if you apply for say a $5,000 term loan, those $5,000 are transferred into an account at closing, be it a, a, an account at the bank or we could send it to your primary bank. But of course, the hope is that we establish a good rapport with the business owner and eventually open a business account where we can have a full relationship. So for startups, the loan is up to $10,000. So what that means is we can grant or we could lend up to $10,000 in the form of a line of credit and or term loan. Why, why I say and or term loan is because we can combine it where we can, you know, if you need say $2,000 today, or I should say once we're approved and closed, we can um, lend $2,000 for you to say purchase equipment and then 8,000 can remain as a line of credit where you're not paying interest on that money until you need it. Um, so that's um, for a startup. For an early stage business, we can go up to 30,000. And the same, we could do a line of credit and or a term loan, and we could kind of play with it to see how much it is that is actually needed up front, or if it's just a full $30,000 line of credit. Um, the fixed term rate as of right now is 5.99. This um, has been extended through the end of this year. Um, so that we can um, offer this fixed rate option and it, it is for one year. There's no fees, no prepayment penalties, and the maximum term is three years. For the entrepreneurial training loan program, the minimum credit score does have to be 600 or better. And um, we you know, wanna make sure that also there is no liens, judgments, if you have filed bankruptcy, 
um, as long as it's dismissed, we can take a look at it. Um, but you know, our credit um, our credit department will review it to see if that's something that can be um, done. The next um, program is the CIPC Easy Path Business Financing. So CIPC Easy Path Business Financing um, is similar to the ETP loan. The only difference is, is that for the Easy Path, um, there is no requirement for an entrepreneur training program, but it is a little bit more difficult to get it approved um, without the, the training. The Easy Path Business Financing Program was specifically designed to provide small business owners with options to help achieve their business goals. Answer small business owners' questions about loans or lines of credit. Help small business owners make smart financial decisions for their business. The Easy Path Business Financing products are available to businesses located in low to moderate income census tracts in each of the bank's assessment areas. The Easy Path business financing products have flexible underwriting standards, which can result in a higher approval rate than the traditional underwriting standard. So, although it, it does have flexible underwriting standards, if you were to take the ETP Entrepreneur Training Loan Program, the chances are higher to get an approval uh, with the Entrepreneur Training Program. But all in all, it's um, the programs kind of. Um, are similar in the aspect that they both offer a line of credit and a term loan. So a term loan requires that the small business owner to make set payments on a regular schedule over a predetermined period of time. So you know exactly what your payment will be over um, say 24 months or 36 months. Um, with a term loan, the small business owner receives the loan proceeds upfront. So um, for an easy path term loan, the loans are up to $25,000. The term is for a year. Um, the fixed rate of 5.99 and no fees. Um, time in business, at least one year minimum. And the amortization is up to five years. And we could renew this annually. The available cycle sc score is 600 and above. And a personal guarantee is required. So with an easy path term loan, uh, you know, you can, um, you know, you can kind of manage your finances by knowing what your monthly payment will be over the next 12 months. So we also offer the easy path revolving line of credit. So revolving line of credit provides access to a predetermined borrowing amount to use at the borrower's discretion. So funds are drawn as needed. Line of credit up to 25,000. The term is 364 days. Variable rate prime plus four. So prime right now is at three and a quarter plus four. It'd be a seven and a quarter floating and there's no fees. Time in business of one year minimum and also the cycle score 600 and above and a personal guarantee is required. So the line of credit, the way the line of credit would work is you would um, call your lender and request an advance on your line and that those funds would be transferred into a checking account at CIBC Bank. Um, so though the, it's, it's a pretty, you know, good product where call your lender before the cutoff, those funds should be deposited into your account that same day. We also have what's called the Easy Path Step Loan. So the Easy Path Step Loan is basically a credit builder. So if right now you know your credit score is not where you know you would qualify for a traditional um, business loan or one of our meet our one of our products guidelines. Um, so if your credit score basically is under 600, this um, step loan may help you to improve your one, your company's financial credit standing um, with the bank so that you can apply for a business loan. So basically the loan proceeds are placed 
into an interest-bearing certificate of deposit, and the small business owners make monthly payments until the loan is repaid. Then the CD plus interest earned becomes theirs. So basically, we would have a loan closing, you would sign loan documents, and then you would make loan payments every month, say from 12 to 36 months, depending on the amount of the loan. So it's important to know that although there is no FICO requirement, meaning no FICO score, you don't need to have a minimum FICO score, you know, we do need to make sure that you can repay that monthly payment. So the fixed rate of 5% and there's no origination fees. Um, you need to prove sufficient income to make the loan payment. So the smallest amount is $500 and uh, we could go up to $10,000. So this is a credit builder. Um, a lot of times these are good if you are thinking of um, you know, you have a business already in place, but don't need the capital, but your credit score is not the best. Um, you can apply for an easy path step loan to, to kind of build that business credit along with your personal credit. Okay. And the next product that we have is called the Community Plus Loan. The Community Plus Loan specifically targets neighborhood businesses that have passed that critical first year of business produce sustainable cash flow and whose owners have good credit. So if you are um, if you are profitable and you you have good credit and for this product the minimum credit score is 660 or better, um, this loan program um, can help you to continue to grow. So it provides financing that is typical typical below market rate, must be in business, so the business must generate um, revenue for one year. Growth revenues must be below $1 million. Term loans of the of one to five years, the fixed rate is six to 7% and no fees. And the line of credit is one year term and it's a variable rate plus two with no fees. So that's our standard program. But for the line of credit right now, we have where it's a variable rate um, of prime. So it's a three and a quarter percent floating and no fees. And that promotion is good through the end of the year. And available minimum credit score, as I had mentioned before, of 660 or better. And a personal guarantee is required. So the Community Plus um, loan is. Uh, for businesses that are cash flowing and the owners have good credit. Um, I'm going to go back one screen. Um, so for the Community Plus loan program, the loan can go up to 100000 and it can be in the form of a line of credit or a term loan. And we could do a combination of, of both. Um, so we could do like a $50,000 line of credit and a $50,000 term loan. Just depends on what the business needs. Or we could do a $100,000 line of credit, so long as the cash flow um, of the business can sustain um, that debt. So the next one we have is Beautify Your Business. And this product, CIBC offers up to $15,000 to qualified business owners along commercial corridors in this SSA, special service areas. Only special service areas designated by CIBC will be considered. So this loan um, is to be used for improvements for general maintenance of buildings such as um, signage, windows, doors, um, brick cleaning, tuck pointing, a restoration of original architectural features and uh, painting of the building exterior. So this is basically if you have a business, you don't have to own the building, um, you would need consent from the property owner, but this is something that you can utilize as a loan to kind of just beautify your the, the image of your of your business. So, you know, it's I guess it's similar to the SPIF program in the aspect that 
this, this program of the city of Chicago also helps um, to do these improvements. But if you are not in a corridor where the SPIF is um, approved, this is something that you may want to qualify for. I guess the other difference is that this is not a grant, this is an actual loan. Okay, and then we have what's called a business overdraft line of credit. So basically, um, if you establish a deposit account with the bank, um, you know, you can apply for this uh, business overdraft to be in conjunction with your deposit account. So the applicant and business must be in the bank's assessment area. The small business checking will be eligible for a business overdraft. The revenues of the business cannot exceed over a million. All owners of the business that have 20% or more ownership must sign and guarantee the business overdraft. Original signed application is required. And if owner of a business has multiple business accounts, their approved business overdraft amount will be reduced per account. So this um, product, um, the way I um, kind of like to um, let clients know is, say for instance, you have a deposit account and you receive the check and you are counting on that check um, to clear. Um, you know, you, you provided a service and um, they gave you a check, you deposit it into your account, and then you write out checks because you know that you're, you know, you're confident that this check is going to clear. Um, and then it so happens that that check bounces. Um, this business overdraft will help where you do not incur those um, business overdraft fees on that account. And so long as you make a deposit that same day, it will cover that this business overdraft line of credit balance. Um, so this is just a product that is good to have. There's no fees associated with it. And um, you know, you can save a lot of headaches um, by applying for it. There is um, you know, a minimum credit score um, for this product as well, um, so that you can qualify for a certain amount. Okay, um, so the bank also, um, so CIBC Bank is a full service bank. Um, in my capacity, I work with small business, um, small business owners, um, sole proprietors. I work with um, startup companies um, and we work with organizations, not-for-profit organizations throughout the city of Chicago and other states. Um, my main goal is to um, help the small business owners um, in whichever way I can uh, so they can be successful. But outside from that, um, there are other loans that are offered by banks, um, such as CIBC. We have a small business administration department and SBA loan department where they focus on SBA loans. So you may be um, a business that is already established and is looking for a small business loan. We can put you in contact with someone in that area that can assist you with a small business loan. So there, we have offer 7A loans that are used for acquisition, construction, expansion of owner-occupied real estate. So owner-occupied real estate is that you your business is actually in the property. Purchase of equipment and per permanent working capital. So for a 7A loan, the maximum loan amount is $5 million. We also offer 504 loans, which provide long-term fixed rate financing for land and buildings and must be done in conjunction with a community development corporation. So um, a, a company that we work with um, is SummerCore. Um, so there, you know, that's a good tool if you are interested in, um, you know, purchasing um, a property for your business. Okay, so we also do commercial real estate loans. Um, so we do owner-occupied properties um, loans. 
available for up to 75% of value or purchase price. So what does that mean? Um, so if you're purchasing a property for $100,000, for example, you would need to put down 25%, which would be $25,000. Um, so you would need, we would need to verify that that money is, um, you know, that you have that those funds. And on top of those 25,000, we also need to make sure that you have sufficient to cover the closing costs. Um, and that you're not left with zero equity or zero capital. We wanna make sure that you are, you have liquidity to um, cover the um, down payment and um, have liquidity to, you know, to function going forward. So typical loan terms have a 25 year amortization with a five year balloon. So a five year balloon basically means that you have a fixed rate for five years. And after five years, you would need to refinance or renew that loan with that bank. So typically commercial real estate loans are not, you know, long term fixed rates. They typically will mature at the end of a five-year balloon. Properties can be owned individually or corporately. So in other words, you can own it in your name or have uh, you know, an entity, an LLC, a corporation um, be the um, borrower. Okay, so traditional commercial lending, CIBC provides financing solutions tailored to your needs. Our understanding of many unique aspects of your business allow us to work together to accommodate your financing requirements. We employ our creativity, understanding, and experience and expertise to build the right solution for you. So be it revolving lines of credit, whether you want to purchase inventory, manage temporary cash flow, need to take advantage of other options that come your way, a revolving line of credit gives your company flexible, convenient access to cash. Term loans, a term loan can give you the resources you need to finance expansion, add inventory, invest in new equipment, or otherwise help your company grow. Our team can help you structure a deal with competitive rates and appropriate maturity. We also offer letters of credit. A letter of credit provides assurance to your trading partner that your obligations will be paid using the bank's credit as long as documents called for in the letter of credit meet the term stated. There are many different letter of credit options, so it is important to talk to one of our relationship managers to learn more. So we offer traditional commercial lending products. Um, if anyone is interested in any traditional commercial lending products, I can send um, your uh, information to, um, to a professional in, um, at CIBC that would be able to assist you at, in, in, in these types of loans. So these are loans that are typically, you know, over um, $500,000 um, and your, the revenues of the business are over a million dollars. And that um, ends my presentation for today. Um, I hope that um, the information uh, provided um, helped. Um, this is my contact information in the event that you are interested in um, applying for a loan or would like to just have a conversation. I appreciate um, your time today and taking day out of time out of your day to uh, be part of this presentation. I want to thank the city of Chicago and um, Stella uh, for providing the opportunity. If there's any questions, um, I am um, available for questions. Questions? Um, this PowerPoint presentation will be available on the Chicago BACP YouTube page no later than Monday. Uh, let's see what else we have. Regarding credit and character, what if your scores are 600 plus? Would you have late pay payments on one item that you obviously can't reverse, but in, but in other areas you are positive? 
Yes, that's something that we could definitely look at. How do you show a lender that you are already invest you already invested your personal money in your bank? Um, so, in other words, that they have a business and the business is um, they already put money into the they put money into the business, right? That's the question. How do they? Um, so basically, if it's a company that it's already in business, um, providing tax returns, um, typically will guide us. Um, so if they have at least one year of tax returns, um, that tax return will let us know that there are revenues. So obviously, if there's revenues, that means that they're already investing into the business. I completed the certificate program a while ago. Is my certificate still eligible for a loan? Yes, the certificate is valid so long as we have um, a relationship with um, the organization and they're offering the entrepreneur training program. The certificate is valid. Summer Corps. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Someone has a question. They, they said, did you say Summer Corps? Yes, yeah, Summer Corps is um, works with the SBA. If I already have a business checking account at another bank, but I wanted to secure a loan or line of credit from CIBC, would I be able to do that without opening a checking account at CIBC? So long as it is a term loan and not a line of credit, we can extend, um, you know, a term loan without that deposit account being established at CIBC. However, if they are applying for a line of credit, one of the conditions of a line of credit is for the business owner to establish a checking account or a business checking account in order for the funds to be transferred into that account. What advice would you give a person on how to fix their credit? Um, so there, um, there's a lot of not-for-profit organizations out there that help um, reestablish um, a client's credit. Um, so um, one of them being the Women's Business Development Center, uh, there's the Northwest um, side CDC. Um, so there's a different organizations that can help. The Resurrection Project also has, um, I believe, a team that can help um, reestablish the credit. I don't have business tax returns. That's something I need to get educated on. I have already been in business one year. Okay, so I guess the question would be, are th do they file or, uh, as a sole proprietor? So do they file that b business income on their um, personal tax return? And if they don't, um, we can treat it their business, it would be treated as a startup company Although they've been in business longer, they have not reported revenues um, on their tax returns. What's the most common collateral that is used for a nonprofit organization asking for a loan? Um, so for not. If she would, she or he would like to take my contact information. Um, we do have an area that specializes in not-for-profits. That's not my specialty. I can direct them to that um, to that um, colleague of mine, um, so that they can inform them as to what collateral is utilized for not-for-profits. Is there a CIBC bank on the south side of Chicago? 
There is. We do have one. We have one in Oak Lawn. We have one in Mount Greenwood on 111th by Kedzie. Um, we have we have quite a few. We have some in Tinley Park. We have some. Um, trying to think. Um, we do have um, CIBC. We do have one in Bronzeville. It's a brand new location in Bronzeville. And we have one in Little Village. In Little Village. Sorry. Do banks do loans for startups? Yes, we do have that um, program where if they graduate from the city of Chicago workshop program, we can, um, we may be able to qualify them for up to $10,000 for a startup. The e-commerce change any of the information presented today. I'm soon launching an e-commerce site and I'm wondering how it, how it will be different. Um, say that, can you repeat the question? Do business loans for st oh no, 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 wrong one. Does e commerce change any of the information presented today? I'm launching no. an e commerce site and I'm wondering how it will be different. Um, I, I guess I don't understand the question. Is this an e commerce business? Is it? Is it it's like, it, yeah. Yeah, so we do loans for e-commerce business. So if you have an e-commerce business and you're looking for capital, we um, have in the past done loans for e-commerce businesses. Can you open a business and hire yourself and others? Yes. What's the APR of CIBC? Um, so the interest rate, I can tell you, is 5.99% for the term loan. Um, the APR, I can get back to the uh, individual to let them know what the APR is. I don't know that on top of my head. Can someone be trained here and apply for an easy path financial loan? Yes, you can. Take the entrepreneur training program and also call and also apply for easy path. You can, you, you don't need to complete the entrepreneur training program in order to qualify for an easy path. What do you need for a startup loan when it's a new business? Um, when it is a new business, we would need um, the application tax returns, and we would need at least um, two, three check stubs. Um, we do accept co-applicants in the event that the um, the the new business owner um, is not employed and is focused on the company. Um, we do accept co-applicants and we would need for both to have a credit score of 600 or better and um, meet the income requirements, such as being able to cover the um, payments. All of your loans require a personal grantor? Yes, all of our loans require a personal guarantee. Business credit scores instead of personal credit scores. Um, so we look at the personal credit score um, to um, approve the loan. What is a personal guarantee? Personal guarantee is that um, in the event in the event of default, the bank would um, would um, you know basically put a lien against you personally. So you are signing on behalf of the company, um, so you are kind of on the hook to, as well as the company.
we don't have any more questions. Any um, final words of advice for our attendees? Um, my, I guess my final word of advice is um, to take care of your credit. It's vital. Um, it's a report card, basically, that the lender looks at. Uh, know what you need the funds for when you're applying for a loan. And try to always have a banker to be there for you, no matter if you need the loan today. Um, you may need it later. And if you have that relationship with a banker, um, I think it's um, it's vital um, to the growth of any business. Um, have a good accountant on your side. Have a good attorney on your side. Um, just having all of those partnerships helps to um, to kind of be in a good sound position as your business grows. And again, I would like to thank everyone for their time, their questions, uh, and their interest in this workshop today. Um, and thank you, Stella, once again. So again, if you have any further questions for Anita, please reach out to her via email or on her office phone, which is posted here. So I'll leave it up for a few seconds. Again, this webinar will be posted on the Chicago BACP YouTube page no later than Monday. Thanks for joining us. I hope you have a great weekend.